He gives life to the dead soul. If you notice, know, Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. Let's read together. And you, that he put them, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of his work, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worked in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation. Now we are living in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires, the lust of desires and the command. That were by nature the children of God, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have made us alive together with Christ. By grace, your blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? He said, when we're dead in sin, we walk ignorant of the way of God. And being ignorant of the way of God, we were under the management of God by the beings who man was to rob, to kill, and to destroy. He says that we were in bad shape. We followed the loss of the flesh and the loss of the mind. We thought evil, we did evil, we did the wrong stuff. We were on a journey that was leading, that led to self-destruction. He said, but God. He looked down upon us. He didn't, listen, he didn't have to save us. Yes, sir. He didn't have to place the knowledge of himself in your mind and your heart. God did not have to give you his Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. Matter of fact, he didn't have to send his spirit to convict us of sin. He could have left us as we want. But God, why did he do it? Why did he intervene in our lives? Scripture said, who is rich in mercy? God who is rich in love. He cared so much about us. That he would not let us continue down the wrong path and down the path of self-destruction. He, 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 he gives us life. Christ said, I come that you might have life. The life given Christ. He makes provision for the expansion of this life. Christ makes provision for the expansion of this life. We come out of another wound and we uh, grow as a result of of time passing on and on. But 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 not only do we grow, not only do we become a teenager, <laughs> adolescent, and adult, we make expansion so that we can experience life and experience a measure of joy, a degree of happiness in whatever state we find ourselves in. He makes for the expansion of this life. He makes this life worth living and, 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 and beneficial. So we have hard times and difficulty, but he gives us families, he raises us uh, together with loved ones and friends who care about us, who are able to what? We are able to gain and develop an association. And as we develop an association with other people, we really find ourselves in other folks. You will never really completely know yourself until you open yourself and allow others to retire to meet you. Because we were made to fellowship and to interact with one another. God knows nothing about a long range of citizen, a long range of person. We are interconnected. And it is through our relationship with God and our fellowship with one another that we find fullness of life. For the benefit of those of us who might fear that we had it all figured out, we had it all worked out, you need to know that some things that some others can hear to me. If we want to learn to listen, if we want to learn to submit ourselves, that uh, positive things that others can deposit in us, that would make our lives greater than what they are. And so that he makes provision for the expansion of this life. He supplies us with grace. He supplies us with blessings and joy, glory, and he supplies us with happiness hereafter. When this life is finished, when we have gone, gone the last mile of the way, he has prepared for us a place that will be totally different 
than this lady. So I said, I come back to my life. If you claim that I might have life, that have a dead man, I did not and could not find life in any other way. Are you any other me? It's because this world, with all of the resources, is limited, finite, and, 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 and unable to supply us with all that we need. We are being made, not only physical beings, but we're more spiritual beings. And this life, the things of this life, cannot fulfill our deepest desire because we were made for God. And God is spirit. And because we were made for God, that is a, uh, it's impossible for the path that the, 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 the things of this life to satisfy our deep love. <laughs> Only God! I come that you might have life. No, but I come to fill your life with meaning and for you. I come that you might find happiness beyond what circumstances and conditions can be over. I come to you have so that you might have life. This life is spiritual life. Spiritual life. This life is spiritual life. I said for this This life is salvation from death. Salvation. Being saved. Being delivered from sin and the consequence of sin for doing, or being delivered from evil and the consequence of evil doing. I come that you might have life. Salvation from death. Not from physical death, because we will die. But salvation from spiritual death. That's what Ephesians represented. We were dead in trespassing and sin. Our sin separated us from God. And we were dead in trespassing and sin. And we were dead because of our trespassing, because of our sin. Salvation is deliverance from spiritual death. So that we can know God. The Holy Spirit takes the word of God and acts upon our mind. And when we by faith believe that word, we are quickened, made alive, we are regenerated. Yes, sir. And as we are regenerated, now, now we have, we've been given a new nature, a spiritual nature. This physical nature cannot relate to God because it is evil, but we've been given a spiritual nature whereby we can relate to God. God has given us a spiritual nature that whereby we can relate to Him. Yes. And His Spirit acts upon our spirit. And Romans said in the fifth chapter, that the Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit confirms our sonship with God. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then you have to watch that because then it is trying to uh, lead you to, to, to draw your conclusion from how you feel or even from what you do. Satan is trying to get you to doubt your relationship with God on the basis of the inadequacy and the failures of your own life. Yeah. 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 But whether I'm, I succeed in this temptation or I fail, it doesn't change the fact that I'm still a child of God. Yeah. When I succeed, God bless me. When I fail, God chastises me. And he just died me because he wanted me to get back in line. He wanted me to exist. Listen, when I succeed, it means that I'm walking right in the path of blessing. But when I fail, I've gotten out of the path. There's no blessing in this path. And so God has to chastise me to get me back over here because there's some blessing God has for me. There's a peace he wants to give me. There's a strength he wants to give me. And he can't give it to me if I'm over here. So that's why Hebrews said, don't take harsh, harsh, the chastisement of the Lord. He only chastised it because he loves you. Yes. Yes. Said, I want you to draw your conclusion on the basis of how you feel. I didn't feel too good in church, so they never think there's something wrong with my relationship. I don't have to feel good all the time. My feelings change. Your feelings change. But I tell you something else. God never changed. He is still the same today that he was yesterday. And God will be the same tomorrow. God will continue to love me tomorrow. He will continue to do good for me. He will continue to reach.
job. And invite them back into his presence. He won't lose the throne of praise, the throne of praise, or be down. He said, whenever you fail, go to the throne of praise. And he said, come boldly. The life that he gives is a life that is predicated not on our worth, our value in, in ourselves. It's not predicated on what we do. It's the life he gives is predicated on the love of God. The love of God surpasses and goes beyond human activities. It's, it's, it's salvation from death. And then this life that he gives is a new and divine principle implanted in the soul by the Holy Spirit. You remember the time when you used to do certain things, say same thing, and didn't think nothing? You can go and this, that, that, that. Even when you got in church, you can, you, you, you can do your thing, and then come Sunday morning, you're too tired, I, I don't know. Because you still, still was dealing with the aftermath of Saturday night. But this life he gives is a divine influence. He takes his spirit in our souls, make us aware, cognizant of his goodness, and we're able to properly evaluate things. Doing this, going here, and being involved here, give me this. But when I get involved with God and the things of God, when I obey Him, oh, how greater is the joy, how greater is the satisfaction. Yeah. When I do what God said, right. right. when I walk upright and before Him. Yeah. That, that's a different, isn't it? In other words, to say it in another way, is that what the world gives me is nothing compared to what God gives Now, don't try to get out of this type of theology, but you would hear it say, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than we do. And if you give me Jesus, then that's enough. Most folks didn't understand exactly what they were saying. They were, okay, you got relief, that's all you need. You don't need bread, you don't need water. No, they weren't saying that. They were saying, give me Jesus. And he will supply all of my needs. And when I eat bread, with the confidence of, of the fact that my bread comes from heaven, that bread is going to taste a little different than when I eat bread thinking that I'm going to pack it on my own. You don't hear what I'm saying? It's that you sit to, to eat a meal or you lie down and go to bed that night. And when you think about it, it the goodness of God, that was God's grace and God's mercy, God's protection that brought you throughout the whole But they couldn't go to bed that night. Then they end up at home. They end up at the hospital somewhere where else they were. So you become more grateful. Yes. 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 And then the light that he gives is distinguished by progress. You hear me telling you all the time. You ought to, at this stage in the game, you ought to know more than simply the 23rd song. The Christian life is quite often referred to as a house, a garden, office, a building, which carry the idea of progress. Uh, okay. Nothing making progress. I know one foot forward and two backward. That's, that's, that's characteristic of a of, 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 of young baby in Christ. But you ought to be making now two steps forward and two backwards. And then if you keep on with it, if you keep And just one time. You all ever get to a point 
miracle you make, every step of yours is going to be forward because you're living in the go by your flesh. You're going to fail. But I tell you what, you'll be able to see some progress in your life. You ought to be able to understand that, that being with God has enabled you to love and like some people that you couldn't stand at some time. They probably made you tell me you didn't crack people out there good. You couldn't stand you didn't lie. We all had a starting point. I'm not coming through to you. We all had a starting point. We all used to bust up at some point. We different ways. Come on, come on. And then the Bible the Bible about to remember the creator in the days of your youth. In other words, you ought to be trying to put Change, control, and change your bus up in the early days. So that's what you can spend time with God and be useful in the service. And I say that because it's not to say I don't really have to tell you that. Okay, but, but, but I'm saying it because of the fact that you want to remember the Creator in the days of your youth. You want to give God service. You want to do the best that you can for the kingdom of God while you have a measurable a reasonable portion of heritage. <laughs> you can make that choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You will at one time or another stop some of the stuff you do. Believe me. <laughs> you can you can willingly, voluntarily say, you know what, I'm going to give God my life and I'm going to give it. Yeah, my time because I really want to be able to go there. You're gonna do it sooner or later. You know? Maybe we're not giving the time, but 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 uh, uh, brother off riders will come. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Payne gonna be you you gonna stop and you may you may not let I can't just can't do without it. You're gonna do without it. Like I said, you can do that. When you come around, you don't even understand. Okay. Well, if you say what you want, I'm going to hold on to it. You're going to hold on to it with your mind. Mr. Hopefully that I can get it 
He said, you will have everything right at your disposal. You don't have to depend upon nobody throwing you anything. All things are yours, believer. God has given you all things pertaining to life and righteousness. He said, if you need a little joy, just take it. If you need a little peace, just take it. If you need hope, just take it. If you need meaning and purpose, he said, you'll find it all in me. I want you to understand, I'm not knocking the season of stuff, but I'm saying that Jesus gave us more. He offers more. In him we have more at our disposal. He offers himself as solution to our problem. He, he offers ourselves as a substitute that he might die, but you may die for me. He is the invited man of truth. He says, if you really want to know the truth, listen to me. If you want to know the truth about God, listen to me. God is spirit and that worship him. But what can be spirit and truth? Listen to me. If you want to know the truth about God, listen to me. But then look at me. But when you see me being in the sea, it is saying that God is concerned about your body. When you see me feeding the hungry, yeah, yeah. it means that God will provide your every need. Yeah. When you see me dying on the cross, it means that God is willing to forgive you for your sins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, if you want truth about life, he said, listen to me, I come that you might have life. If you want truth about life, I come that you might have life. I come that you might live in harmony with God's will. And God's will is that you believe on him. God's will is that you believe on him. God's will is that you love one another. God's will is that you do good for one another. He said, believe on me. Believe in the brotherhood of man. I don't care how bad, how no good, how low down, that's still your brother. And God said, you don't have to agree with what they do, but agree with the fact that that's the value, the value of that soul is the same with God as it goes. And he cares about it. We want God to get that person who maybe is treating us in a, a wrong, a harsh way. And God said, I love that person just as much as I love you. Yes. Believe in me. I come that you might have life. I'm on a mission to rescue humanity from his perilous and lost condition. Where a man seems like his own eye. But the end is only destruction. Jesus said, I come that you might have life. Why? Because man is lost and he needs a seed. Man has strayed away from home and he can't find his way back. He needs a God. Jesus said, man is broken and he needs fixing. Man is a rebel and he needs mercy and he needs grace. Man is restless. He needs stability. And so therefore, come unto me, all you that labor and labor, I will give you rest. Man is guilty and he needs grace. Man is miserable, but he needs mercy. Man's heart is wicked and he needs transformation. I come to take care of man's need. As I come to those who have been the other day, and this man, my name is Michael D. Antonio. He's the author of a new book, Never Enough. You know what he said? He said, a motivational speaker may give you a shot of adrenaline, but when you leave the theater, you face all the challenges that fill your life when you walk in. It is unfortunate that even in many religious assemblies, there are those from the pulpit who, who offers a shot of adrenaline, make you feel good for a little while. But when you leave the theater, you still face with the same stuff you face before you came into the theater. In other words, he said, you may turn to the artificial world of entertainment, TV or movement, and watch your favorite movie. You may engulf yourself in a, a novel or seek escape through drugs and alcohol or your moral life. You may even be religious and give yourself to religious activities. 
Church attendance as a way of coping with the disappointment of your soul. You might be saying about when the story, the TV story has ended, when the novel is complete, when you come down off to the high, when a benediction is given, you still need something from it. You still need something that can hold you in times of tribulation and in times of trial and affliction and death. You still need something. Give you peace. With that much confusion all around. You need something to keep you. You need a faith that will keep you pressing on in spite of the difficulties of life. What God that was a pill that could solve every problem and all you have to do is take it three times a day with a half a glass of water. But God doesn't offer that. He doesn't offer that. He offers strength for the judgment. He said, put one foot before the other. And that time you're going to wobble. That time you're going to wobble. He said, but keep pressing forward and trust in me. I'll get you from the beginning to the end. But God who has begun to work in you, he's going to finish that. And don't be discouraged. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. Yes, he calls us to give ourselves to him. Listen, Jesus, like this, now give you speaking now. Jesus does not offer escape from reality. You can stand and say, yes, it's bad. You can say, yes, I'm good. You can say, yes, I'm no more sleeping. He doesn't offer escape from reality. He offers himself as your helper. He offers himself as your comforter. Bible said he will keep you in perfect peace. Yes. Jesus is with me. I like this. Thank God. God gave me this one directly. And I like it. Jesus' message corresponds with reality. His message corresponds with reality. He doesn't blow anybody's mind. He doesn't lift you up for the purpose of lifting you fall. He doesn't mislead you. His message corresponds with reality. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Yeah. And, and, and now those who try to tell us that if we have faith in God and our prayer is all right, we can have what we want, we can have and examine, we can call those things that are not as though they want, and all of this stuff, but Jesus' message corresponds with reality. And the reality is this. I don't care how much you love God, how much you serve God, I don't care how much faith you have, that's still going to have something you're going to have But he will help carry you through. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to bow out of the game. You can stay in the game. You can be a winner. Yes. He did not play upon people's emotions, their fears, or their unrealistic dreams. Let's see it. Here, let's, let's face it. All Christians were not have a big heart up in him. All of our loved ones will not, sick loved ones will not be you. I don't care what we pray. Now some are not going to be here. They're going to be taken on home to glory. All of your burdens will not be moved. All of your trials and tribulations, all of your, your conflict in life will not be moved. But if you walk, day by day, you're able to say every day, oh sweet. Walking with Jesus, that's the day. Listen, not all Christians will have a big day like that. All prayers will not be answered the way you wish them to be. Some of our children will break our hearts. Some will not return that. Some of us will suffer the wars. Good kind is but, but, but. If you trust and obey, if you cast all your cares on him, no matter what, 
You'll still be able to say, it is well with my soul. Might not be well with my bank account, but it's well with my soul. Might not be all well on my job, but it's well with my soul. It may not be well in my community, but it's well with my soul. Lord, the Spirit told me last night, said, I'm going to close it out like this. So I had to get on my iPad and type in some stuff. Jim Clinton. The author. And I just want to share this. This is not Cleveland, Saint. This is not Clayton Franklin. This is not like one preacher said down on the cracker. <laughs> this is third name. Look at the first third I don't feel no way down. I come before from where I started. Thank you. 